In this video, I'm going to talk all about V-speeds. VX and VY. VX, or best angle of climb, gets us to the highest altitude and the shortest amount of distance. For the Cessna 172, VX is 60 knots. VX is to be used when you're trying to clear an obstacle. And as we've crossed the shoreline, we've reached an altitude of 1,450 feet. Now we're going to do the exact same thing again, except we're going to climb at VY, best rate of 79 knots. Best rate will get us to the highest altitude in the shortest amount of time. VY would be used when there's no obstacles to be cleared. And we're climbing at 79 knots. You can see our rate on the vertical speed is slightly higher than it was when we were climbing at 60 knots at VX. So they were at the same spot over the shoreline. You can see we're only at 1300 feet. But climbing at a higher rate will get to a higher altitude in a shorter amount of time. Maneuvering speeds, stall speeds, and normal operating speeds. VA is maneuvering speed. For this airplane at this weight, it's 99 knots at max gross weight. If you're below that speed, you can apply full controls. You won't hurt the airplane. Above that speed, you can deform the airplane. Below maneuvering speed, if you were to apply full controls, the airplane would stall before anything could break. Structurally, VSO is stall speed in the landing configuration, full flaps, gear down. That's the lower limit of the white arc. VS is the stall speed in the clean configuration, flaps up, gear up, and that's the lower limit of the green arc. VNO is the top of the green arc. You can only go above that speed into the yellow and smooth air. VFE or flap extension speed. Some airplanes in Flight Simulator 2020 and in real life allow you to put in a notch of approach flaps well above the white arc. In the case of the Cessna 172, you can put in 10 degrees of flap up to 110 knots. If you want to add more flaps, you have to be in the white arc and that starts at 85 knots. Next is VNE or never exceed speed. VNE is indicated by a little red line at the end of the yellow arc. During flight testing, the test pilots will take the airplane to a speed where the wings and tails start to flutter, like right there. That speed is reduced by a certain amount to provide a safe margin, and that speed becomes VNE. VMC is minimum controllable airspeed. This pertains to multi engine airplanes. Minimum controllable airspeed pertains when one engine has failed. If you get below minimum controllable airspeed with full power, the rudder no longer has authority and cannot maintain directional control. And then the airplane does what you just saw. To recover, reduce power, lower the nose, and slowly increase airspeed. As airspeed increases above VMC, you can slowly add power. VMC can be reduced by turning into the operative engine. VMC will be increased turning away from the operating engine. The left engine is operating at full power. VMC is increased as we turn away from that engine. And you can see the effect that it had on the airplane. To recover, reduce power, lower the nose, bank into the good engine. As airspeed increases, slowly add power. Next is V1, decision speed. The only time we deal with V1 is on takeoff. If we have an engine failure, engine fire, loss of directional control, tire blows, we hit something, something smells funny, you abort your takeoff. You can do that up to, but not including V1. In real life, if you hear the co-pilot say V1, your hand comes off the throttle and goes to the yoke and you're going flying. Prior to V1, you can abort. And here comes V1, not quite to it, and I've decided to abort. When an abort happens, the first step is to move the thrust levers to idle. 
then apply maximum braking, and then ground air brakes and reverse thrust. You're eliminating thrust, stopping the airplane, getting more weight on the gear by putting the air brakes out, and then using thrust reversers. Thrust reversers help, but they don't help as much as the previous item. And when I say more weight on the gear, I mean it increases brake effectiveness. The next two items you hear during takeoff are VR and V2. VR is rotation speed, that's the speed you start pulling back on the elevator. And V2 is takeoff safety speed, that doesn't really mean a lot. What that really means is if you lose an engine, you're going to fly at that speed. V2 is just going to give you the best climb performance on one engine in a jet. The FMS listed V1, VR, and V2. It listed V2 as 140 knots. I bugged that with flight level change, and in real life we do bug V2 in the airplanes that I fly. So if we lose an engine, that speed is bugged, we know exactly what to go to. The right seat guy will hit flight level change and adjust to that speed if needed. So here comes V1, rotate, V2, and positive rate of climb, gear would come up, and I'm going to reach down and actually kill an engine, and then we're going to climb at 140 knots at V2. And we're going to maintain V2 until we reach a safe altitude, an altitude that's clear of obstacles. I've just chose 7,000 feet, so we're going to climb to 7,000 feet level off, increase our airspeed as we get to V2 plus 10, we'll go flaps up. We'll also accelerate to about 200 knots after that happens. And as you can see right now, we have a couple of cast messages in a real jet airplane when this happens. You just cancel the cautions right there, the master warning and the caution, and you continue with full power on both engines, even though one is inoperative, you just push them both up. Then they'll stay there until you reach a safe altitude. And once that happens, then you call for a checklist. And that's pretty much it. In the meantime, just maintain V2 until you reach 7,000 feet, as indicated in this example. VLE is landing gear extended speed. VLO is landing gear operating speed. This is in the TBM, the landing gear extended speed, VLE is 178, so that's the fastest you can go with the landing gear extended. VLO, or landing gear operating speed, has two speeds. One is putting the landing gear up, which is 150 knots, putting the gear down is 178. So here if we wanted to put the gear down, say we wanted to get slowed down quicker by putting the gear down, we can't do it until we reach 178. There's 178, we can select gear down. Now that the gear's down, we can go up to 178 knots, but the landing gear operating speed for retracting the gear is 150. Now we have to slow down below 150 knots Joshua before we can put the gear up. This speed applies more after takeoff, so if you take off, you reach 155 knots, you can't put the gear up. You've got to slow down to 150 and then put the gear up. I'm bringing this up because this is in the longitude and this is incorrect. It should be V1, VR, V2 for takeoff, and then for landing it should be VAP and VREF. That brings us into the next segment, VAP and VREF. VAP is approach speed, VREF is reference speed. Reference speed is calculated by stalling the airplane and adding 30% to that stall speed. So here the stall actually happens at about 98 knots, so they would take 98 times 1.3 and get about 128, and that would be the reference speed for the airplane at that weight in that configuration. We approach the runway on final at V app. That's reference speed plus any correction for wind gusts or items like auto throttle on. 
This speed will be held until 50 feet above the threshold crossing height. At that point, we want to be at V ref. Which is right there from the number we calculated. When the landing distance is given, it's actually the distance from crossing the threshold at 50 feet in the air to touching down and actually bringing the airplane to a stop. So the beginning part of the landing distance calculation, you're actually still in the air. Then that covers basic V-speeds. I enjoyed making this video. If you like these, be sure to click like and subscribe. It really helps a lot.